Welcome to the Newcastle Airport. We are in the UK today. And this is a really nice little payware that recently came out. It's a very nicely done airport. And it kind of goes really well with the new uh, F-28. Yeah, this one has come out too. And we've got a pretty cool flight in this airplane. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Dave. I do the spy flights over on Twitch. Welcome if you are new. Thank you for coming on in today. Uh, every week or so, I like to get get together with you here on YouTube and do what I call a complete cold and dark flight on one of these increasingly complex airliners that we have here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And the F-28 is definitely one of those increasingly complex uh, airplanes. So uh, what are we doing today? We are going to do a complete flight today in the F-28. It's a full cold and dark flight. Uh, we're doing full VOR to VOR flight planning. The add-ons that I'm going to be using for this particular flight are going to be Navigraph, Simbrief, and Volanta. I also like to use Sky Vector for VOR to VOR flight planning too. And I'll show you a little bit about how it is that I came up with today's flight plan. Our flight plan today is Newcastle to London Heathrow. We're departing off of runway 7. We've got several VORs that we're going to be hitting because this is a non-RNAV airplane. You don't do the waypoints, use VORs. Uh, EGLL, London Heathrow is landing on the nines today, so let's plan nine left. Cruise altitude, 28,000 feet. This should be about an hour and 20 minute flight, 247 miles. Like most of these flights, um, as soon as we get to cruise, one of the things that I'll do is hit the pause button on the recorder, you hit the pause button to play, and then we get back together again uh, about 100, 100 miles or so from uh, top of descent. Uh, this airplane just been released. I like to call this a big, small airplane. So it's not a huge 747. This is not one of the biggest planes uh, out there, but there is an awful lot that is modeled in this airplane. I'm also doing real world weather and real world time. So what should you do? Well, if you'd like, if you've got the airplane, hit pause on the video here on YouTube and load up your simulator and fly along with me. I try to go, er go through every button that I'm pressing to uh, go through and try and make this thing work. Uh, so the cool thing about YouTube videos is you can pause, you can restart, you can rewind in case there was something that you missed. I also suggest doing a hometown flight in a couple of days at least. That way you kind of remember some of the things that you might have picked up from this video. And of course, I always like to rem uh, remind you, join us over on the uh, Spy Flights on Twitch. They're all group flights. It's an incredible community over there with some really knowledgeable people, including real airline pilots uh, and just incredibly smart folks. So uh, please be sure and do that. I always do like to say about the videos that I'm doing, I am a private pilot. I'm not an airline pilot, but I do have a private pilot's license. I've been doing flight simming for uh, decades. I've been a flight simmer for about seven year, six, seven years now. This is not about the right way versus the wrong way. This is all about what it is that's working for me. And the whole goal here is for uh, whatever's working for me. Maybe it's going to help you get this complex jet up off the ground, cruising and down back on the ground without, you know, Know, pixels all over the place and stuff like that okay so shall we jump on in you can see that the airplane is at the gate right now and a very nice airplane um, this is one of the liveries that comes with the airplane too so there really was a Foxtrot Golf Delta Uniform Victor that was flying for British airplane British uh, British Airways sadly the airplane did get scrapped a long time ago uh, but this was a historical airplane so that's kind of a cool thing in fact a lot of the air uh, liveries that you'll get come with a history of the airplane so they really did put a lot of uh, a lot of interesting uh, work and study in uh, into this airplane Okay, first things first. Airplanes at the gate were at gate 10. How do we know what to do for the flight? Well, normally with a flight that I do, I use an app called Simbrief. A lot of us do, it's part of Navigraph. This is the free side of Navigraph. The charts are uh, the payware part. So you can see my flight in the map right over here. These are not waypoints though. These are VOR to VOR uh, waypoints. Um, not RNAV waypoints. How did I come up with these? There are several ways to do it. One is when you're editing your flight, you can go and let me go ahead and show you how to re-edit this. So let's hit edit the flight and we're gonna come all the way down here and you see down here where it says root finder, you can go to show options and hit VOR only, which is what I did. 
and VOR only gave me just two waypoints, okay? It gave me the uh, new waypoint and the London waypoint. All of these little spots in between, I ended up adding because uh, just one waypoint here and then two, 300 miles down the road, another waypoint means you're gonna lose, tra lose track of the VOR. And it's pretty crowded airspace here in the UK. So you need a couple of more VORs to be able to go to. So what I do is come over to this other website, and this is called Sky Vector. Okay, Sky Vector is a real-world planner. Okay, so you don't need, in Flight Sim, you don't need to worry about signing in and setting up an account or anything like that. And you can go and do great VOR to VOR flight plans. So the first thing that I got out of SimBrief was uh, the VOR right here, and it was the Newcastle VOR. Okay, so it, we got that one. And it basically took me directly down to London. So what I ended up doing was kind of coming through here, looking through the airway, and I moved down here. And okay, here's a here's an interesting waypoint. Here is the Pole Hill VOR. And so what I did is typed in POL, and then that drew the line over there. And then all I did was a continuation of find VORs along the route. So here's another one that I found, the Trent VOR. And then we continue down a little bit more. Here's the Daventry VOR. And then continue on down. Now we did a make a little bit of a turn here. And this is the Bovingdon VOR. This is north of London Heathrow. And I know that Bovingdon is one of those little gathering points that ATC likes us to go to before we go and set up for our approach into the airport. So I put that one in there. And just to have the numbers, I also got the London Heathrow VOR plopped into my flight plan too. Okay, so we got all of that information and we've got a fairly straightforward uh, flight plan going down into London. The next thing that you could do is you could also take a look at some of the weather layers if you wanted to, but we'll do that another day. The one important thing that I like to do is grab the nav log. And this is a really, really nice nav log. First of all, it's gonna show you all of your VORs and the frequencies, that's a nice thing to have. It's also going to give you a track to that VOR too, and also a magnetic heading and a true heading. I generally usually plug in the track and that seems to work. It's gonna give you the distance between each of the VORs and that kind of helps out too. This is a really great tool to use. And one of the things that I'll do is take this and I will actually save this over to uh, the desktop. I will put, uh, put a copy of this over on the desktop and you can see I've got a thing in here already called Navlog and I just write over the old one. So I, I always have a PDF there on, on the desktop and we're just gonna flat out open it too. Oops, don't wanna open it that way. Hang on, it's gonna make me, um, um, the uh, web browser is constantly, uh, once a week it seems to want to reset all of my options here. And uh, it wants me to open PDFs with the web browser now. because, And I sort of like, no, I really would like this in my PDF reader. That way I can stack all of these together. And it's not dependent on it staying out on the internet too. It's on the desktop. So here we go. Here is our active flight plan. So this gives me fuel and everything else. Oh, and by the way, here is also the uh, PDF form, uh, PDF manual that comes with the airplane. And this, air, this thing right here, that was the information that I got about finding out about this British Airways uh, uh, F-28. It's a Model 2000, so 70 passengers, and there you go. So now we have an active flight plan to give us fuel and weight and balance, and we also have a nav log that we're going to be able to use too. So now that I've got those all set up, the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to go and grab some charts. So here, this is the paid part of Navigraph, and I've gone and after I did the flight plan in uh, SimBrief, I then imported it here into Navigraph. And you can see down here at the bottom, I've got a stack of charts. Back in the old days, the pilots would stack up their paper charts in the order that they needed it. Top one's on the top, that's the first one you need. So the first thing that I've gone and gotten is my parking coordinates and we are here at gate number 10 okay next thing i'm going to need is the airport ground chart and we are taking off on a very nice runway for the spy flight runway 007 so we'll go ahead and do that nice nice easy taxi 
Another thing that I like to do is, especially if it's an airport I haven't gone and seen too much of, I really do like to go and take a look at the taxi routes so that I've got an idea of, okay, we're gonna come out of gate 10, come on down here, and Alpha 1 for our takeoff. Always nice to kind of pre-brief you, brief, brief yourself on that, because if you're gonna be on VATSIM, you're gonna get really busy. The next thing that I've gone and done here is I've gone and gotten an initial approach. So one of the things is you probably noticed there are no SIDS or STARS here because there really weren't any non-RNAV SIDS and STARS. Remember, we don't have waypoints in here. So the thing that we've got to do is kind of figure out, okay, how can we go about approaching uh, the airport here? Well, one of the things that's non-RNAV is the transition from the Bovingdon VOR. So this is how we would come on, come on in and uh, do the approach. So there's Bovingdon right there. There's the airport, there's the runways. We are expecting nine left. Okay, nine left here. So we're landing to the east. So as we come on here after Bovingdon, we're gonna go out for five miles on the 178 VOR. And then after that, when we uh, see that the, uh, we're on the 200, 265 degree radial of Lamburn over here, we make a turn and we head on out this way at about 6,000 feet. And so there's after that, we make the turn about four miles from Lamburn. So that helps us out a little bit. So 30 miles from Lamburn, it's about where we're gonna make the, we should be done with the turn and then another four miles, then we turn south and start hunting for the VOR. These are a lot more complex than just plugging your SID and your STAR into the flight management computer and flying away. So one of the things I've kind of found is this airplane's a little more stressful uh, than some of the other airplanes. You really have to kind of plan ahead. And I don't execute these perfectly yet. I still have a lot of work to do on learning how to do this correct. The ILS is pretty much the same. We're coming in on the ILS 110.3. There is our heading. You can see our platform altitude is 2,500 feet. Our minimums are 200 feet radar altimeter. Yep, that's right. We are not uh, using a uh, barrow on this one. So we'll be setting the radar altimeter. And good old Heathrow here coming in on nine left. After landing, we'll probably get the Alpha Bravo and go ahead and figure out a place to park somewhere around here. I think that um, uh, British Airways is gonna be somewhere down here at terminal five A, B and C. So maybe we'll come down and try and grab something. At, I think the domestics are at five A, but I'm not 100% sure. And so there's the five B. So we'll get another chart as we're flying along and grab that one. It's easy to do, let's do it now. So go to airports parking stands you can see that I've already got parking stands over here uh, so there's this one so let's see parking stands continued aha there's the 5a so now we're gonna plan to come in down here to the 5a all right we're all set and ready to go so this is all good we've got our charts set up we've got our navigation log set up here all is right with the world I do have real weather and real time so we're all set and ready to go with that. I think it's time to go to the airplane. If you're really into some immersion, you could go and set up something to open the door from the outside. You could set up a uh, control key. Haven't learned how to do that. There is a YouTuber and live streamer named uh, Mustafa and uh, uh, in the flight sim world. He's actually got a special button on one of his uh, controllers to set that up. That's kind of a cool deal. But one of the things is, is this is one of those airplanes where the door actually opens from, uh, it flops down. So you can't have the jetway in place first. So you gotta go aboard the airplane and you gotta come up here and you can open the door this way. And here comes the airplane and it kind of goes clunk when it goes down. I mean, a real good clunk. Now let's come over here and you put this little thing down here for jetways. And this thing is gonna go and drop the uh, handrails. And so we can come over here and let's see if we can get, uh, let's see if GSX will give me a, a jetway here. Can we operate the jetway? Uh, British Airways. Hey, look at that. We're gonna get a jetway today. And so now this will come down. The guard handrails are down 
and we'll have a nice jetway so the passengers don't have to jump to get in the airplane. Now, you don't really have to do all of this with the airplane, uh, but it does add to a nice little bit of immersion. And if you come back in, you can see our jetway is right here at the right here at the door. So that's perfect. Now then, the next thing that I usually do is go to the electronic flight bag with this uh, airplane. And they didn't have EFBs and iPads back in the day, but this is a great way to control a simulated airplane. So I kind of like going and doing this. We're going to go, and if you put in your uh, username uh, for uh, SimBrief, it will go and grab your flight plan. And there's the flight plan. It will also go and grab you some METARs, which is really nice to have them right here in the flight plan. Next step, let's go to Aircraft, and we're going to impro import the SimBrief OFP Operational Flight Plan Payload. This is essentially going to load your airplane with passengers and cargo and fuel. And that's it, that's it. you're done. The airplane's loaded, you don't have to do anything else. So if you want, you could open the forward and aft cargo just in case you're interested in a little bit of immersion. And you can see our cargo hatches have flopped open there. The other thing that you could do is it's always pretty much spot on. Bring your flight plan over, page one, our total fuel weight should be 4,933 kilos of fuel. That checks out. How about our zero fuel weight? 23,762, 23,707. Okay, I think there's a little bit of a discrepancy, but as long as those things are in the ballpark, I'm not gonna stress about that too much. And that's it, our airplane is loaded, we're ready to go. So now we can go and start flipping buttons and switches and turn the airplanes on. The first thing we're gonna do is do the battery power. And the uh, battery power is up here and you go and hit the battery button. And both the battery uh, batteries are, have good electrical power and we can come over here and turn on the battery. Now then, the old days, I think they immediately fired up the old APU, but now in uh, the UK and the European Union, uh, they're gonna want you to run ground power for a while. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get a ground power card and we're gonna pop that in. So we're not running the APU, not doing uh, using fuel and uh, not polluting and it's not uh, doing wear and tear on the, uh, not doing wear and tear on the APU as well. So ground power is green. And the next thing that you would do is come over here and you could look over here and we've got an external power. There is our external power and we're gonna make sure that the external power is in the green zone. That way we don't short something out. And then we can go ahead and it says external power is ready. <gasps> external power is now on and powering the airplane and it's coming to life. We'll turn on the APU about 10 minutes before departure is generally, I think, the rule that you have here in uh, the UK and the European Union. Okay, and so now our airplane's coming to life. The next thing that I'd like to do is start getting the lights ready to go. And so uh, as far as lights are concerned, one of the first things we're going to do is we have to fuel the airplane so no smoking can go on. We're also going to go ahead and arm the emergency exit lights. And I'm gonna turn up the panel lighting here. This is for the glare shield, also known as the autopilot. The next thing we'll do is come over here, the one over the co-pilot's head. This is gonna backlight the instruments up here on the upper panel. We'll also come down here, and we've also got, let's see, I was gonna fine tune this view just a little bit, just a touch. Let's zoom out a bit. There we go. Just so I could get the lights. I needed a better view for this. Okay, so nav lights, that's up here. We're gonna turn on the nav lights. I'm also gonna come down here and turn on the master radio switches. If you're on VATSIM, you're gonna wanna turn up the radio. Both of them, oh, and uh, important safety tip, turn the volume out, level up too. We're also gonna come down here and we're gonna put the transponder on standby. And all of this is now pretty good for the moment. Okay, so that looks all absolutely outstanding. Uh, as far as programming in the flight management computer, there is none. So the next thing that we could do is come on in and we're gonna start going in and doing a few other things, like setting up our frequencies for the ILS. 
and I also forgot to set a view here and this is a view that I have for the autopilot and I want to be able to see the autopilot in this okay that's good now then the first thing to be sure and do is come over here to the to nav radios and you're going to turn it not just to standby but also to DME and do this one too standby and DME so put both your nav radios on otherwise you won't get any navigation and now we need to start getting the nav radios here so over on the nav log our first radio is the Newcastle VOR the Newcastle VOR is going to be our outbound so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in 114.25 so 114.25 there we go our next one is Pole Hill VOR and that's 112.1 one one two oh look at that already done and then we're going to slide over here and our course outside of from uh, newcastle to pole hill the uh track is going to be uh that's going to be 191 so i'm going to come over here and just put this in right now 191 and that's going to be the outbound and also, we're going to set it over on the other one, the inbound. Because I don't know that we'll actually pick up Pole Hill on our departure. So that's why I'm presetting this now. 191. Okay, we're good to go there. Let's come on down here and our, uh, set the altimeter. And the altimeter we will find over here on the operational flight plan. And our altimeter is 1009. Should be 007, but I'm not going to whine. So 1009 is our altimeter setting. And the real pilots are going to take a look at the altitude setting that you've got here, and they will confirm on their charts. Let's look at the airport. The airport is 266 feet above sea level. We are at not quite 266. So there is about it. 1008 the altimeter setting was 1009 so it's probably an older setting but you'd also just kind of make sure that you're there that's pretty close to four yeah that's about 266 the next thing we need to do is set our um, uh, runway heading and it's 006 and I know that because I went over here and if you look down here, there's the runway heading for 007, and I whined about the, I whined about the heading not being sevens. Okay, so 066 is our heading. So this is the heading over here, and so you're dialing this up here and looking down here. It's a little bit awkward. So we're gonna go ahead and set this as close as we can. And all that looks good. Now we're really about 10 minutes before push and start. So how about one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's probably about as close as that's gonna get. And then the last thing we'll do is that we don't really have a uh, departure altitude at the moment, so we'll just go ahead and do 10,000 feet for our altitude there. Okay, and that looks like it's pretty good. Again, about 10 minutes before departure. Let's slide up here. And we're going to go just above the uh, throttle, the fuel cutoffs, and let's do the APU fire test. And you hold it down until the uh, light goes on. And with that, reset the light, and we're ready to go and fire up the old APU, which is up here. We're going to come on in here, and we're going to make sure that generator 3 is off, air is off. We're going to go and hit the main switch and count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and what that does is that gives it enough time for the flap and the uh, the intake flap to open up, and then you can hit start. And then once you hit start, you'll see the RPM starts to go up. The TGT turbine gas temperature goes up too. It's going to spike just at the top bottom end of the red zone there, and then drop down to about 400 degrees. The RPM will continue on up to about um, 100 and at 400 we have a stable APU so one of the first things we could do is get the air turned on 
because it's probably a little stuffy today and we're going to go ahead and turn the air conditioning on for the passengers because we care about the comfort of our passengers right the next thing to do is to do a uh, generator three and so generator three is uh, let's also go and see what happens here on the electrical panel when we trip it in see what it does with our external power generator three is on and now we're going to go ahead and turn external power off <gasps> well it flashed at us but everything seems to be working so i guess we're good so now the external power says ready we can come down here to the airplane page go to aircraft and i'm going to disconnect ground power Let's also go ahead and close the forward cargo and the aft cargo. That's good too. And it's probably about time for us to go and start getting rid of the uh, jetway. We did that through GSX. So what we're gonna do with GSX here is instead of retract the jetway, I'm gonna say prepare for pushback and departure. That will retract the jetway. So the jetway should go away here almost any second now. There it goes. And we'll go ahead and lift this little thing up here for the stairs. Passengers should be aboard and happy. We are ready for pushback. Hey, they're ready for pushback. Let's go ahead and close the door. Closing the door. And we're going to go with the door closed. Seat belts can now go on. It's a little bit warm, so I did not turn on the window heaters yet. It's a warm day in the neighborhood all over the place. Departure check completed. Bypass pin inserted. I'm going to come here, and we're going to do anti-collision lights on. There's our anti-collision lights. Those are on, too. The doors are now closed. I have failed to go and pressurize my brakes. That's an important safety tip. So here's your hydraulic pressure here. Electric pump system one. Turn it on. And you'll see all of a sudden the hydraulic pressure goes up gear. and some more hydraulic pressure builds here. You want to get this into the green zone. Right now we have chocks in place. Airplane's not going to go anywhere. But if all of a sudden we pull the chocks and even if the brake's on, we might start, might start rolling around a bit and, because we didn't have pressure. So we have to go and do that. Ah, let's go ahead and do nose left, tail right. And we're gonna disconnect this. And let's also come down here and let's squawk 1000. And I'm gonna turn the transponder on. Even though we're not on VATSIM, I always try and squawk 1000, squawk mode Charlie on taxiways. And we're almost ready to go here. We're connected. And at this point we can come in, I'm gonna pull my chocks. And I think almost everything's good. How's everything here? I think everything is good here. Let's go ahead and do a cabin call. Let the cabin know that we're gonna start rolling the airplane about. And you know what I've also forgotten to do is put in my cabin pressurization. And our cruise altitude today is 28,000 to start. So we're gonna come over here and go 28,000 and it's a small little number in here. So there's 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. There's 28. And then you add 1,000 on this airplane. And then your uh, altimeter. There's an altimeter here. And we are, what, 1009? So we reset that to 1009. Okay, so all of that looks good. I think we're ready to go. This airplane does have checklists, and it's all I really do need to dive into my checklists here, but I haven't done it yet. So I think it's time to go. Parking brake. Off. Commencing push. All engines are clear. Start at will. And we got a nice view outside the wing here. A nice view of the little airport. And there we go. As soon as we get out of the gate area. We'll go ahead and start some engines. And we'll come down here. And the first thing to do is do fuel. So boost pumps. We don't have anything in the center tank, so those can stay off. We'll come up here. And we're going to turn on the engine starter system. And we're going to go ahead and hold it down. Count one, two, three, and let it go. One, two, 
three. And then we're gonna look down here and the middle gauge here for the engine, that's gonna go up. There's 10% at 15 to 20%. We're gonna hit start. And 15, there goes start. The, the light that's flashing up there is the igniter. And that engine's gonna start on up as we do our push. A nice pushback on this one. And then when this thing gets to 500, so the top gauge gets up to 500, there's gonna be a flash like that, that's your generators. So there's 500. We're gonna go ahead and go all the way on. Parking brakes are on. We got a good engine start on this one. Let's get rid of GSX here. Thanks for the push. So let's do confirm a good engine Hot start. Brown. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. Now go back up to GSX and just click it again so that it's no longer selected at the top. And we can start another engine. So starting engine number one. One, two, three. Release it. Look down here. That top center gauge for engine one now goes up. We're going to go to the start position here at 15 to 20%. There we go. Start. And we're going to watch. There goes the igniter. Igniter's going on. And we'll wait till we get to 500 up here. And there's our other little engine going. I love the way when they're disconnecting the airplane just kind of flops down like that. And almost to 500. Left is clear. Right is clear. The igniter is now off. And, and, and there we go. So fuel is running. Everything looks good here. Going to lift that up there. Our airplane seems to be coming together fairly nicely. And we'll just wait. Uh, we should be getting a salute and release from guidance next. So there goes our crew chief, and the crew chief's gonna hold up the gear pin. Hi, I got the gear pin, I have removed it. And then the next one is gonna be the gear pin and a wave. That's the next thing, and that says, I have inspected the underside of your airplane. There are no people, bunny rabbits, or kittens, and it's safe for you to, tra to, to start taxiing. And then at this point, we are now on our own. We can do our thing. We can, uh, you know, ATC, of course, is gonna want us to be in touch. Okay, so all is right with the world here. I'm gonna set my bugs for takeoff. Bugs are set for takeoff. Flaps are 11, and our flaps are now set to 11. There is a thing here, you know how you uh, arm some speed brakes for departure on uh, the Airbus? This is the lift dumper. I think that that's another way of just throwing up the speed brakes there. We're gonna arm that for departure too. We're gonna come down here and turn on the taxi light. Taxi light's over here. That's on. We are squawking mode Charlie. We are done with the APU at this point, so we can come up here and we're gonna go over here and we're gonna turn off the APU air. I'm gonna turn on the AC here in the co cockpit because it's hot. And we're gonna turn off generator three. And that goes off and everything else is good up here. The next thing to do is we're going to hit the um, uh, off button essentially here. It's stop. So the stop button, I'm gonna move this here. So watch the RPM. You gotta hold it down a little bit. One, two, three. And then as soon as the light comes on and it goes down, uh, that's uh, stopping your APU. And you wait until this goes all the way down and then cools a little bit because apparently the flap's still open and you still need to be, it, when you turn it off, the flap closes. So you need to leave that open until it's off because it causes a real flap. And there's your flap joke for today. I'm turning up the uh, backlighting here on the engine instruments. We also have another one here for the pilot. And those are the instruments in front of the pilot. It just makes things a little bit easier to see. 
Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is down here for the autopilot, we're going to turn the uh, yaw dampers on. So those are good to go. We've got everything set here. Flaps are good. I think it's taxi time. Everything looks good up here. Let's look up here. And we've still got a little bit of TGT. Turbine gas temperature, it's about 200 degrees. Uh, everything else is off. I'm going to leave the flap open for just a little bit of the taxi here. Okay, next step for me is I like to come over here and get a nice taxi chart out. This is part of the payware of uh, Navigraph, but it's so nice. And if you're going to start flying on VATSIM, it really is something you're going to need. So we pushed and started from gate 10. We're going to come out, take Alpha down to runway 007. Okay, sit back here. Make sure that your gamer chair is locked in so you don't tilt back. That is especially helpful if you have um, uh, rudder pedals. And I think we're ready to go. So parking brakes can go off. Tow brakes are on. I'm going to release tow brakes, and this one you do have to add a little bit of power here to get the airplane rolling. And we're rolling. How about that? How's that TGT here? It's a little bit below 200. I'm going to come over here and we're done with this panel except for if you click this button, the CG, it will automatically set your trim for takeoff. And that's really nice. Use nose wheel steering for this. As we're coming out of the gate area, this is usually my little time that I like to remember to undo the control lock. It's that blue lever down there. Great time to move your everything forward and around and stuff. And then we're gonna continue to make a right turn over here to get to the runway. Control lock, uh, you only forget to turn off the control lock once when you find yourself hurtling down the runway at warp factor 10 and nothing seems to work. I'm going to go ahead and take my flight directors and put them onto heading. And the instructions on the airplane, the standard operating procedure, is to turn your pitch command to, your pitch command needs to go to, um, um, uh, 10, 10 degrees. I turn my pitch, to, pitch command to 5. I climb way too fast here. Not that it helps me out that much, but. Okay, runway ahead. Always good to see that. And there is runway 007. Throttles are idle, so we're just gonna gently stop here. There we go, nice little stop. So let's go ahead and there is another button here, another switch. We're going to extend the landing lights, but they're not on yet. We're going to be going out onto the runway, so I'm going to turn on my strobes. I'm also going to start altitude reporting. Everything looks good here. We're going to do another cabin call. Come through. Please take your seats for tape. There we go. Now, I've also, because it's hot, I have, uh, for, I have not turned on some things here. So we do need to now windshield heaters. Engine anti-ice is auto. Probe heaters are going on. And I think now we can go ahead and taxi on out. After departure, we're going to make a left turn to try and find uh, our heading and VOR where we're supposed to be on the VOR. And out we go. This airplane is really interesting for one big reason, for a lot of reasons. But one of the things that I really you know, would encourage you to jump into something like this. Um, it's old school, it's VOR to VOR, and that's an important thing to learn. What happens, you know, if the satellites fail? What happens if RNAV? 
What happens if your McDo gets hacked? I mean, real world kinds of things, scary stuff. But how do you fly the airplane if you don't have all those? Uh, and I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying it's a good thing to have a backup. And VOR to VOR is a great way to have a backup and be ready to learn these things. I'm going to do landing lights on. Landing lights are on. I think it's time to give this thing a shot. What could possibly go wrong? Throttle's going up. Power set. Little bit of a crosswind. Let's get back over here. Checked. Whoops, a little gusty. Rotate. Oh yeah, we do have a little bit of a wind. I probably should have checked that. Gear. Yeah, there's a little wind today. There's 10 degrees, now we're gonna start pushing this down just a little bit for flaps and get to 250 knots. Slightly off our runway heading too. There goes our flaps. Continue pushing it down to about... And I'm waiting for my airspeed to get up to about 250 knots here. Climb power. And that's going to be down here. These two switches go to climb. Uh, what are we doing? About 97. There's 250. I'm going to do AP. Autopilot is on. And let's see here. We're slightly into our left turn. So we're going to go to heading mode. There's 250 knots. I'm going to do an IAS climb. And then I bring my power back to about 95%. And these are those uh, top, uh, top dials on the outside, the outer top dials, 95%. Nice climb, and around we go. Okay, I am picking up the next VOR. So let's switch that. I'm not picking up the Newcastle VOR. Maybe I don't know how to tune it. Let's continue our turn and get on that radio. So there's our turn. And out we go. We're done with the taxi lights. So the taxi lights are here. Landing lights remain on. I have probably forgotten a whole lot of things here. This airplane takes a lot of learning. And there's a nice climb at 250 knots. IS and heading are set. We are 85 miles away from our next VOR. I think that was Pole Hill. We are out. I'm gonna go ahead and just click the takeoff card. That kind of pinches all these speed bugs together. And we are still coming around nicely on the turn. And I'm just readjusting this a little bit more. So we're right on that, right on the VOR. We're four miles away from uh, the uh, Newcastle, so it wasn't even showing because we were in the cone of uncertainty for that. That's right. Okay, and we're right on, so now I'm gonna go and hit the beam button, and it's gonna follow the beam to our next VOR. 82 miles away, we are three miles away from our airport. a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Looks like the clouds are getting a little bit thicker though. Okay, now then, the next thing that I'm gonna do is grab my uh, nav log, and after Pole Hill, it's the TNT, so 115.7 is our next VOR. So 115.7 on VOR1. 
Okay, that's good. And from Pole Hill to TNT, the track is going to be 159. So 159 is going to be our new track. I found the track is just a little bit easier on 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 uh, on my navigation like this. Again, that might not be the exact right way to do it, but it's what's working for me. We forgot to turn the uh, weather radar on to standby. Passing 7,000 feet, uh, transition altitude. I think here it was 5,000. So there is a uh, special click spot here and it's right here on the altimeter. So if you look, there's how you adjust the altimeter, but the uh, screw in the upper left-hand corner is a hot spot. That's standard altimeter for you. And it sets all of them in the airplane, which is really nice because this airplane will keep you busy enough as it is. Let's continue the climb, 28,000 feet. Twenty-eight thousand feet. Airplane should continue the climb. Make sure it still does. We still have IAS engaged, so that's good. Here comes ten thousand feet, so landing lights can go off, and we'll retract the landing lights. And now it's time to speed up a little bit. To do that, I'm going to go and go out of IAS mode, and I'm going to hit pitch mode. And then I've got a view here. So let's see, we're gonna look down here like this at the pedestal, and I want to see this indicator here, the climb and descend, and the pitch here. And I'm gonna push this down until I can reduce my climb. And you sometimes have to hit it several times to about 500 feet per minute. There we go. And now our speed's coming up and I'm looking for 20, 250, 260, 270, and now I'm gonna go back to IAS. So I've speeded up my climb a little bit to 270 knots. And out we go. Be sure whenever you get a chance in Microsoft Flight Simulator, when you have a minute, look outside the window. Because it's all satellite photography there, this is probably what it looks like on the flight from Newcastle down to London. Because we got real weather in real time. It is absolutely one of the neatest things about the flight simulator is this kind of detail. And so far so good. How is my power? So generally for climb after I'm at 270, and again, I'm using the outside indicators here. I'm gonna move this down a little bit. I like to be about 95. So I gently, and I'm hardly moving my throttles at all, barely moving them to about 95% on each engine. And so if you see, the big, the big needle is not moving, the little one is. That's your five. There we go, that's about 95% on the climb. And that seems to be working pretty good on these short hops. Everything else looks pretty nice up here. I don't see, oh, we forgot to turn off the APU. That's okay, it's cold now, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the uh, APU, turn, on, turn it off. Sometimes I forget that one. Yes, there is a checklist, and one of the things that I'll be doing in the next few days is starting to use the actual checklist to try and start doing it correctly. So we have a checklist over here, and we can come in, and so before starting the APU, so one of the things I'll be doing is starting to use this with this airplane. The other thing we'll need to start using is the top of descent calculator, especially on a short hop like this. So come on over here. Our initial approach from Bovingdon is going to be 7,000 feet. So 7,000 feet down to 6,000 feet. So 7,000 is what our, we want to do a descent to. So 7,000 feet. And then I usually like to do the desired V speed, vertical speed, 
And with this, I've been finding 1,500 feet per minute is, is it actually seems to be this airplane's sweet spot, I guess. Current altitude, I'm gonna sink it. Ground speed, I'm gonna sink it. And now we know that at our current altitude, we need 34 miles to make that, uh, to make that 7,000 feet. Well, we're only at 16,000, so there you go. And now, you know, it's sort of like, okay, where do we want to do that front? Well, that's going to be from the Bobbingdon VOR. So, how do we do that? The, get ready for math here. Sorry. So, okay, Bobbingdon from DTY. The distance here is 34 miles. So, BNN to DTY, we want to be at 7,000 feet at Bobbington. So, it's probably going to be about 110 to 70. So, 34, 56. We probably want to start our descent a little before between TNT and DTY. You could do a little bit more exact math right now. I have not had enough coffee for this morning. Oh, and look at that, we got another VOR. So we're picking up the next VOR. So we are going to Pole Hill right now. The next, this, this is the distance to TNT. And it's a nice smooth flight. Let's go ahead and do seat belts in case the uh, passengers have had a few too many pints and needs to go and, you know, go. If you've gone to look into the cabin of the airplane and you look over here at your seat and you look up here, okay, there's about seat level. Oh no, where's my seat belt sign? It's all the way up here. They didn't have individual seat signs in the seats. They had one way up here. And by the way, while you're uh, exploring the airplane, you can also do various levels of cabin lighting. So all of those work. So there we are, there's more wa uh, And now you can see our seatbelt signs right up here. As you're coming on up here, a lot of the controls here for the uh, flight attendant work as far as lighting, and also the way that you communicate with the cockpit. So there is so much immersion that you can do with this airplane. It's really pretty amazing. There's 20,000 feet, seatbelts are off. We're going to 28,000. How is our weather at Heathrow? OFP, METAR. Heathrow is reporting, this is 1150 Zulu. It is currently, yeah, that's, it's 1300 Zulu now. This is old. There are several places that you can go outside of the airplane. I think maybe we can hit refresh. Maybe that'll do it. So this is 1150 Zulu. Let's see what refresh did for us. 1150 Zulu, it didn't change. So let's see, we could come over here and we can come into a uh, Navigraph. We could go to airports. We could go to information. We can make sure we're in Heathrow and weather. This one is 1350 Zulu. This one's pretty good. So right now our weather is 040 at 8. The altimeter is 1007. A very appropriate altimeter setting. And one of the things I really like is you can go Control C, highlight it, and you can come over here and put these in your flight notes. By the way, this is what I call the flight strip. This is how I take notes and keep track of data for my flights, especially on VATSIM. It is a text file. If you look in the description below, you'll see that I've cut and pasted that in there for you, and you can go ahead and use that. That's just right there for you that you can use. So you can go and take that and put that in your own text file, and it'll be right there. Okay, so let's come over here and I'm gonna go back to the top of descent calculator. Ah, now I need 60 miles as we do our, our descent. 
So our little eyeball thing that we did, uh, you know, wanting to start our descent, uh, probably between TNT and DTY is a good thing. Climbing at about 1,500 feet per minute. This one's doing really good. There again is just so much to see in this airplane. And it's uh, really been fun to learn. The stress again comes from its non RNAV, so trying to you know find your way in an RNAV environment in this airplane, that's where you're really gonna uh, have to jump through some hoops. My like I, I like to use um, um, I like to use um, Sky Vector for my flight planning. You could also use a uh, little nav map is free. So little nav map is really nice too. But I really kind of like, this has just been really nice. You could also go and hit the layers button here and get yourself a little window. You could go and do um, satellite here in the UK. Ah, it shows where the clouds are. Yes, it's going to be cloudy in London. I know, stop, stop being so shocked. And all that's good. And we are at 25,000 feet. So 28,000 feet, up 13 miles away from the Pole Hill VOR. So we're gonna be going from Pole Hill to TNT. That's 112.1 to 51157. So our next heading that we're gonna to wanna to go for is 159. Now we're 10. At five miles, we're gonna take it out of beam mode and we're gonna put it back into heading mode. We're gonna readjust our radios and uh, we're gonna try and get on that beam, on that, uh, on the 159. And as you can tell, I mean, you know, just following along with the map here, we're right where we're supposed to be. Ooh, coming up on Manchester. We could go to that really cool little burger uh, and beverage place at the end of the runway in Manchester. And you also see this is pointing our over here right now as we get closer. This is probably gonna be pretty close to 159 right here when we, uh, in the next six miles. Okay, coming up on this, let's go ahead and we're gonna gently move that heading bug and make sure that it's right on. Yep, there it is, it's spot on. Five miles, three, two, one, and heading. We're in heading mode. I'm gonna flip the radio over to our next VOR, and as you see, we are almost right on. So I'll bet in the next five miles or so, this thing's gonna continue to move, out, move in and center us up. Okay, there we are in the cone of uncertainty. So that's about three miles away from the VOR. And that's probably over the VOR. Let's go back to beam mode. And it's gonna make a nice little turn over to our next VOR. Okay, most of the time that's the way it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but it's always kind of cool when it does. Okay, and we are currently over on NAV1. And NAV1 again is the TNT VOR 1157. So our next is Daventry 116.4. So 116.4. The track from TNT to Daventry is 159 degrees. So we just uh, 159 again. There we go, and if we look down here, we are not picking up Daventry yet, so we get to cruise for a little. And between TNT and Daventry is when we're gonna start our descent. Oh, 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 and we're at 28,000 feet. So make sure, yep, there we are at our altitude, and what is our speed doing? No auto throttle in this airplane. This is the other challenge, so the speed is definitely coming up here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently move my throttles back a very, very little bit, and I try and start at about 
and at 90%, then I'm gonna come over here and see if that's gonna hold me at Mach 0.7. Okay, between Mach 0.7 and the barber pole is good right now. In a VATSIM event, if we're coming into Heathrow and it's a busy day in the neighborhood, we might have to care a little bit more about our speed. But as you can see, it's holding and slightly going down. And then if we go ahead and focus in here, we are technically, it's at 91%. I think that's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets. Now, what do we need? We need 97 miles. So 97 miles from the Bobbington VOR. So what do we have here? We're coming up on Daventry. Again, a little bit of math time here. So DTY to Bobbington is 34 miles. From TNT to DTY, it's 56. So that's about 80. There's 97. We are currently going to TNT. We're 20 miles away from TNT. My guesstimate here, and not doing exact math because, again, not enough coffee, is let's go get 10 miles beyond TNT, and, and then we'll start our descent. The real pilots, of course, they have had plenty of coffee. They're doing exact math. They know exactly when to start their descent. But when you're just getting started with this particular airplane, I generally kind of found that let's just do it this way is a good way to go. Oh, I'm also going to go and center. Aha, now all of a sudden you can see that we are so we're going to TNT, 157. Next is Daventry, 116.4. Daventry is 73 miles away from us right now. Add another 30. So we're about 100 miles away at the moment from the uh, Bobbington VOR. We need 96 miles. Again, I'm just going to guesstimate. Let's see what happens after we may, uh, after we pass here. We really could do the flip-flop right now. So it's the same thing. Let's go to heading. I'm going to flip the radios. Back to beam. We're 68 miles away from Daventry. Let's go and get Bobbingdon, which is 11375. 113. Seven, five. Okay, there's Bobbingdon from DTY to Bobbingdon. The track is 142. So we're good to go there. There's 142. Again, 30 miles plus 60. That's 80. It's time to start our descent. So, uh, and we decided that our descent needs to be 7,000 feet. So 7,000 feet. Now, if you're doing ATC, especially over the UK, they're gonna tell you when to descent. Nine, eight, seven. Okay, that looks really good. Now we're gonna reduce our throttles a little bit here. And I want to get my airspeed to about 270. There's almost there, 271, 270. And IAS descent. Down we go. And now I want to maintain the power setting so that I can do this at about 1,500 feet per minute. And it usually bounces back and forth a little bit. Might need to add a touch. Just a touch of power. There's a touch of power. Uh-oh. Oh, no, we want to pull the power. I'm sorry, not enough coffee. 
We need to pull back just a touch. Come on. See what happens when you fly first thing in the morning and you didn't stop at the coffee stand uh, as you, before you walk down your jetway? Okay, now I pull my throttles back and we've got a little horn here. That's saying, oh, do you really want to pull the throttles back this far? And you just hit the horn silencer. And now we're a little more than 1,500 feet per minute. I generally find that I'm high in this airplane, so there you go. We're 50 miles away from, T uh, from Daventry. Our next VOR is Bobbingdon. We'll plug in the London VOR and off we go. Transition altitude at London is 6,000 feet. Sometimes it's seven. And we already know the altimeter setting. It's 1007, so we're good to go there. How are we doing as far as our track has been? You can always, use, oh look at this, we're right where we're supposed to be. There are some times that it's never like this. If we were on VATSIM right now, you know that I've got runway nine left, the approach chart here. If we were on VATSIM, I would also have nine right because they would be landing and departing on both runways. And this is not just a London thing. This is a Chicago thing, an Atlanta thing. It's a Paris thing and an, a, a, an Athens thing. If they're landing more than one runway, I will have all of the charts that they are currently landing, regardless of whether they told me that I'm gonna land on nine left or not. I'm gonna have those ready to go because if it's crowded, they will sometimes move you to another runway at the last, almost, well, not the last minute, but almost the last minute. So the thing is, is just be prepared like that makes your life a lot easier. Okay, there is 37 miles. We are, 62 is what we need, so 30, 40, 50, 60, I'm gonna pull, we're at about 2,000 feet per minute. I think we're in good shape to be at 7,000 feet at Bobbington. Sometimes I am sadly mistaken. And our airplane is just doing so well today. One mistake that I make, you know, when I get in an airplane like this is I think, okay, it's gonna fly like a Boeing. It's gonna fly like an Airbus. No, not really. They all have different little quirky things that you have to be ready for. So be, being ready for quirkiness is a thing. I'm also gonna go ahead and take my pitch command flight director and I'm just gonna put this in the middle for now. You could look at your ILS and see what the uh, descent is. So we are going to do 8089, oh, which one is it? I know it's probably right in front of me. It gives you your descent angle on this one. I think it's three. I think it's a three degree down. I could be wrong. I'm, not, I'm missing it somewhere. Sorry, not enough coffee. Okay, it's also going to give you the little horn here. Just silence it. There's 28, okay, I need 45. I think I'm going down a little too fast now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bump the power just a touch to get us a little closer to that 1500. Aha, 59 miles to Bobbingdon. I need 43 miles for my descent. We were almost, we're relatively good. I'm gonna continue to bump this up and have us between 12 and 15 now. There we go. There's our rate of descent. I need 41 miles. I have 57 miles to go. If it's between 10 and 15, I am a happy camper. Okay. So our approach, what's the next thing that we need to care about here? Well, over here on this, we're coming down to Bobbington, 11375. 
After Bobbington, we're going to turn south to 178 degrees, but we need Lamburn set up here so that we know when we're on the 265 degree radio, right? So let's come on over here and put Lamburn in. So Lamburn's going to go over here, 115.6. And we need to be on the 265 for this one. So 265. Let's see if my best laid plans actually work here. Okay, 265. So after Bobbingdon, we turn to a heading of 178 degrees. And we're going to do this pretty quick. Did I do that right? 11375. No, I'm an idiot. I haven't, I'm not going to Bobbington yet. 11375. 11375. Better put it back. I, did, I thought we were already going to Bobbington. At Bobbington, the track is going to be 142. Maybe I've had too much coffee. 142. Okay, there we go. One, four, two. How are we doing here? We are 14 miles out of TNT. And we're still going pretty good. 47 miles to go. I need 27 miles. We are now officially a little low. Let's add a little more power here. And we're going to descend. How about 1,012? There we go, that's a little better. As we approach though, 10,000 feet, we also have to get our speed under 250 knots. And are there speed restrictions here? Because we're responsible for those too. So let's see, at Bobbington, 7,000 and 600, nothing really. Because, you know, usually ATC, we have a speed restriction of 180 over here. I'm going to guess probably they're going to want us closer to 210 would be what we would expect. Okay, we're coming in here. So TNT to Daventry. We'll do the same drill as before, five miles. We'll come out here and do heading flip the radios and see how close we are to where we're supposed to be. Five miles. So far, so good. This has gone surprisingly well. Okay, there's five miles, heading hold, radios over to number one. Look at that, just right spot on there. How, how awesome is that? 37 miles to Bobbington. I need 21 miles to go. We're in the ballpark here. Now we'll wait for the TNT to go into, um, into freak out mode, cone of uncertainty. We're flying over it. So there's two miles. And usually about two miles, it goes blip. I said two miles, it goes blip. Didn't go blip. Up oh, there it goes. So about, and we're getting closer here. 32 miles, that's working out. And then when it comes back, okay, now we're two miles on the other side. So we've actually passed it, but we're gonna get on that track heading we wanted. So give it just another little second or two until it just kind of lines up perfectly. And that looks good. Let's get back on the beam. And we are on our way to Bobbing, uh, Bobbington. Now we can go and do all that other nonsense I was yammering about. We need to get the Lamburn VOR. That is going to be 115.6. 115. 115.6. And we want that one to be the 265 degree radial over here. 265. Okay, there's 265. Oh, look at that, we're even picking it up too. 
Oh, and we're coming up on 10,000 feet. We probably are going to have our friends from ATC tell us to start slowing it down. I'm going to reset my heading bug. I'm going to go now to the pitch mode. And then I'm going to reduce my uh, throttles here. And that's going to start slowing me down. We're going to probably have to do the horn again. And the horn is right here. This is also something if you feel like putting a button on, on one of your controls, that'd be a good thing. So throttling down even more. We're 24 miles. There's 10,000 feet. We're still holding our descent rate and throttles are going almost to idle to reduce our speed. Come on, we got 300 feet to be below 250 knots. We're gonna get a speeding ticket. Uh, thrust is idle. There's 25. 250 knots, excuse me. Let's go ahead and plan on 210. These are tight turns. So we'll continue to get down to uh, 210 knots. While we're doing this, the next heading that we're going to be doing is 178 degrees. So I'm gonna reset my heading. We're gonna be making a right turn to 178 degrees. There's 180-7978. That's our, that's our turn when we get to Bobbington. Speed's coming down to 24. Not so bad at the moment. How are we doing on our descent? I need seven miles. We have 18 to go. I think that's probably fairly reasonable. Okay, there's 230 knots. I'm doing 210 to come around here. Hey, we haven't fallen out of the sky yet. Oh, and remember all of that other nonsense I was yammering about, about how when you know, we get to cruise, I usually put the, uh, the video on hold till about 100 miles from top of descent. Yeah, best laid plans on that. That's how busy you stay in this airplane. Plus, one of the things I also like is doing a, you know, these shorter flights like this. You get more practice doing takeoffs and landings, which I think is great. Okay, there's 220 knots. We got 14 miles to go. So we're kind of doing pretty good. How about seatbelts? Probably ought to do seatbelts. We're below 10,000 feet. Probably ought to get the landing lights out and ready to go too. So the landing lights will extend them. And we can turn them on. Taxi light, I don't know if you do that until after the landing gear or not. Okay, here comes our 7,000 feet at 12 miles to go. So, no auto throttle. We gotta make sure that we hold on to our 210 knots here. There's 220, so we gotta be ready with our throttles. And you're really gonna move those up. Right now my throttles are about 30%. We're gonna wanna be uh, back up to about 85 to 90. There's 10 miles to go. Almost to 210. Let's go ahead and just click your speed card. That will reset your bugs. I usually am doing flaps 25 landings, so that's 129. And there is almost 210. It's gonna slow down fast. Like everything, everything happens at the same time here. So there's 210 and 7,000 feet. Throttle's coming up. And 7,000. Okay, there's 80. What's it doing to my speed? Not bad. 7,000. We're speeding up just a touch. Six miles to go until we make our turn to the south. And then we'll flip the radios around, and then we'll see when we make our second turn, when we get on the right radial there, 
That's probably a little much. We're a little fast. There were 220. I was hoping to hold more like 210. Five miles. And if you're really curious about how you're doing, your moving map is your bestest buddy here. Here we are, there's Bobbington, there's Lamburn. Life is good. The trick, I imagine, was doing this as, uh, as the pilots that didn't have Navigraph back in the day. Okay, coming up on three miles away. We'll temporarily get in their cone of uncertainty, but I don't think that's gonna change our change anything still a little bit fast here oh and of course we have to silence the horn while we're doing a bunch of other stuff and we're definitely going a little fast too I wanted 210 there's 1.3 miles how about we'll do the turn at one mile okay heading hold flip the radios and now what we're going to do is wait until we cross over the Lamburn line now that we're done that let's go ahead and set up the ILS never a dull moment with this airplane okay so uh, the ILS is 110.3 110 decimal 3 inbound course is 089 degrees Zero eight nine. Okay, we're all set with that. Now then, we're just waiting for this thing to uh, pop on over, and it looks like we're almost there. So after that, our next heading is going to be two six five. And how did our turn go? Not bad. We're a little wide, but not too wide. So we're doing good. Our next heading's 265. And there it is, coming around there. How about let's make the turn now? 265 degrees. Here comes the turn. Descend and maintain 5,000, I think, is our next altitude. There is 5,000 feet, a little bit fast. Let's pull the throttles back. 210 for all of this. There's our turn. And how about an IAS descent here? And down we go, and it's a little cloudy here. Okay, so we decided that it's gonna be 34 miles until our next turn and our descent is going pretty good at the moment but we're going to need to start slowing it down and our next altitude is three so we're going to hit the 5,000 just fine let's do three I'm going to go to pitch hold reduce my throttles to go to 180 let's also do leading edge slats that's going to help us control our speed a little bit here and we're actually doing pretty good at the moment. We are a little bit beyond the turn here. So I turned a tad bit too late, but that's not so bad. Especially since this is the first time I've done this one. And another click of the flaps. And all of this is looking good. We are, uh, what are we, we are 30 miles, we make our next turn, which is going to be 178 degrees, and that is at 34 miles. Aha, now all of a sudden we are coming up to 180, so throttles coming back up a little bit there. To hold that 180, that's good. There is 31 miles. And if you get a chance, look outside. Nice fluffy clouds. There's 190, so not bad. 32, two miles to go. I'm already getting a DME from the ILS. We're 10 miles north of the airport. 
but we still have a few more turns to make. There's 5,000 feet, 33, almost 34. Next heading is 178. Let's do that right now. So 178 is our next turn. There is that turn. And then almost immediately after that, we're gonna need the ILS. So flip the radios another time. I'm gonna go and just leave the flight directors alone for a minute. We're a little fast. And we're gonna come out this way. We need to descend a little bit faster. So let's go down just a touch faster. And there is localizer. That looks pretty good. And we could slow it down even more. And now we're getting below the glide slope. That's good news. I'm gonna go ahead and let's turn into the runway a bit. And we're gonna arm beam. And we're gonna do that as soon as I start to see that thing moving around. Of course, in the middle of all this, we should be keeping an eye out for other traffic. All right, there we are hitting 3,000 feet. Might want to add a little bit of power. This thing will slow down fast. I'm going to arm the beam now. There's 180 knots. How about landing gear? Gear going down, add some more power. Those, the landing gear does a lot of drag. Looking good. Let's go ahead and arm the glide slope as well. Do your posture check. Sit back. Get ready to do uh, landing things. 180 knots. We're spot on there. We are snagging the uh, glide slope and localizer. After landing, we are exiting to the right. I think I see the airport. Looking good. Landing speed is going to be 129. And we are seven mile final, nine mile finals, and we're starting to slow down a little bit more. We're slowing down way too much. And I could come over here and do glide slope auto. And that's just gonna help, help me with the flight directors. So there's 160, here comes that. I think we're in good shape. We were gonna hope for 180 until five miles DME, but I'm not gonna complain. We got, we got uh, everything good here. Next thing, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna arm those lift dumpers again. Uh, let's see, let's do a cabin call. Hey, we're about ready to land. I do not see the airport. I should see the airport. Now is a great chance to come over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this thing in to use this as a moving map for uh, navigating on the ground. And how's our speed? Not so bad. What are we doing? Six miles. And we're slowly getting tuned up with the glide slope and the localizer. I do not, ah, I see an airport. There's our runway. We'll let the airplane continue to do some of the work. There's five miles. And let's go ahead and click that speed card one more time, which should set that 129 or so. Actually, it didn't. There is 125, right? That's what the card said? No, it said 129. So we'll set that speed bug almost to 130. There we go. And we're lined up there. Flaps are set. A little fast, so I'm gonna pull back just a bit more. If we were on VATSIM right now, one of the things I would be looking at is seeing if there's ground control and presetting that frequency about now because you're so busy when you're getting off the runway. And reducing now to a little bit above that bug.
The weather is getting a bit more frightful, so I'm continuing to let the autopilot do the work for me for a moment here. There's our speed. That looks pretty good. AP is off. Speed is not so bad. A little high. Hoping for a decent landing. This will yell out to you about flaps because it's expecting full flaps. I've been doing flaps 25. I don't know if that's the right way to do it or not. Over the runway, speed brakes, throttles to idle. No reversers. Brakes. Welcome to Heathrow. Minus 322. That felt so good. And we get to get off the gate here. If you look outside, you can see the speed brakes are out. There goes speed brakes. Flaps up and off. Welcome. Come on down here. Landing lights are going to go off. That nose light, we should have put that on. Strobes off. And make a turn over here. We'll go down to that one terminal. And then one of the nice little things that happens is as you're taxiing in, the airplane starts playing this dorky taxi music that is just priceless. So like, really? You got dorky taxi music? Okay, we're gonna stop altitude reporting. Altitude reporting can go off. We'll retract the landing lights. Flaps are going up. Speed brakes are down. We'll get over here. Get on our center line. Be good pilots there. There's the big terminal that we're going to. So if we look over there, there's that fuel farm. And we'll go to the big terminal, and I think they parked some of the smaller airplanes on the ends. Everything looks good here. Now then, uh, in the US at this point in time, I would be flipping on the uh, APU. But from what I understand, we're in UK, so they would want us to leave the engines going until they go and I think attach ground power. I think that, you know, don't even use the APU at this point. They would also have air conditioning that they would pump into the airplanes. So there's a couple of gates at the end we're gonna go to. Don't know what else we would do down here. We could turn off the yaw damper. This is so much, this is such a fun little airplane. The level of immersion is totally amazing. And I think we can just kind of come straight on in here. Uh, no, let's go ahead and grab the Alpha taxiway over there. Yep, there's Alpha and we'll come on in here. I don't know if they would actually turn off one engine with this airplane and do a single engine taxi or not. And then we could come around over here. And we'll grab one of these three gates. So I hope you have some fun with this airplane too. 
I uh, hope you enjoy uh, this, and I hope that the way that I'm starting up the airplane helps you start up your airplane, and it works good. Um, if you liked what you saw, I hope maybe uh, you get a chance to come over and fly with us. Every flight that we do on Twitch is a group flight. We fly every day, Tuesday through Sunday. Our departure time is 1900 Zulu. Sometimes we do an early departure as well. So keep an eye out for that. There is a Discord link in the description below. I will at this point in time say a big super duper thank you to uh, everyone that is supporting the live stream. You can do that several ways if you liked what you saw. Uh, there is Kofi. Uh, that I just started up here too. There is a Patreon where I do uh, videos first thing in the morning on um, on uh, Patreon, and that's a pre-flight of the uh, flight that we're going to be doing ahead of the day. So you're, uh, that would be great if you join that. Also, if you like, it's easy to subscribe. Oh, do we have gate guidance going in? I think maybe we have some gate guidance going in. Oh, look at this, we do. Is that a stop? I don't know if I'm reading it correctly. Uh, what does it look like out here? Let's just let it go up to this one little spot here and we'll do that. Er, Got to do the brake sounds. And let's come down here. And we've got those in. Now come over to the airplane. Let's see if we can do this correctly. Go to the aircraft. We're gonna go chocks and we're gonna do ground power. So chocks and ground power before we shut down the engines. Uh, how did this, did this say stop? If it did, I can't read it. I think it says stop, but we'll see. And then what we're gonna look up here for is it's off. We're waiting for it to say on and okay. Up, oh, ready. So we have just tripped that in. We can now do engine number two, engine number one. We can come here and go to standby on the transponder. I should have turned off the taxi light and we're gonna turn off the beacon. Coming over here, the uh, cabin crew, you've gotta open the door first. And there comes the door. And once this goes down, we'll put this down here and see if we can't grab a jetway. I love the crash of that thing when it pops down. And with that, we'll go and see if GSX is going to give us a jetway here. Operate the jetway. Uh, let's see. British Airways. We get a jetway too. So the passengers are not going to have to walk around in the light level of drizzle. You see that big uh, spool underneath the jetway? That big spool would be the air conditioning. So that would also be what they go and they hook into the airplane so that, uh, there it is, that's where you're gonna get the um, AC. Hmm. So we would stay on ground power. I don't think that the gate matching is working all that well right now. A little on the high side there. Other things to do, we forgot to turn off the seatbelt sign. We got those off. Uh, let's see, everything else I think is really at the moment pretty close to just where oh we need to turn off the pro peters and we're going to turn off the engine anti ice everything is pretty much secure down here and we made it let's see what the damages are though uh let's start with volanta because volanta is usually a little bit nicer to me review your flight and here was our flight path it really was this really felt good and 199 so whereas uh, over here, uh, Flow Pro said 322. This is an also great place to go and check out how you landed. I was aiming for the big bars here. I was a little bit beyond. There were no, no bounces. I'm gonna call that a nice, nice landing. This one felt good. I hope you enjoyed the flight too, aside from the fact that you're gonna have to jump a long way up to get into the jetway there. But this is a cool little airplane. I will tell you that this is one of the pricier airplanes for Microsoft Flight Simulator. But if learning an old airplane uh, and a really good airplane for doing uh, VOR to VOR navigation is something you'd like to do, 
I can't recommend it enough. It has been a lot of fun. As I do like to say, again, not about the right way versus the wrong way. This is what's working for me right now. I'm here to learn and I hope that some of this helped you work on your flight too. I'm still really new here on YouTube, so uh, I'm still reading all comments and questions. Can't wait to see what you have to say about this flight. If there's a flight or an airplane you would like me to feature over here on YouTube, that's also a great place for you to put your uh, suggestions too. Again, please come join us over on Twitch Tuesday through Thursday, 1900 Zulu. In the meantime, as always, I hope you are having a really great day. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you in the friendly sim skies. Cheers.